The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the giants and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. The unique dispensation of the church age where we are surviving today. No matter how well you try to understand without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to believe the truth, what exactly Lord God, the Holy Spirit, wants to communicate for you with the right knowledge of exegesis and with proper interpretation of the scripture, with the doctrine resident in your soul which you have learnt word by word, precept upon precept, is really a frustration for many people, including even John MacArthur, not able to understand rightly and lessening the value of dispensations in rightly dividing the one of truth. Without dispensations, there is no division as such where you are, how you are, and what is next that is happening around. Some dispensationalists who have come around thinking that Israel is the church and it is the spiritual Israel that is passing around now is also a great error. But rather, rightly dividing the word of truth under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit should teach them and give them this dispensing technique so that the much variegated or the manifold wisdom of God from the churches could be taught dogmatically. The way this men they have come around in the pulpits today, taking the word of the Lord very lightly, silly minded, like the frivolity what they could use around. They are like wells without waters, unstable in exegesis, and not able to stick to the truth thoroughly, dig the word of the Lord and get the truth and communicate that, has really caused a great error in this apostasy. Why many people end up in apostasy by not having proper truth, negligence from the pastor teacher to rightly divide the truth and impart them, inculcate them in the truth. It is not that what this man thinks, what that man thinks, what this person thinks. It is what under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit tells to you to tell that is what it takes to think under the empowerment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And what does Lord God, the Holy Spirit do? To whom it has commanded to preach the truth, it will appoint them. And what does this man do? He studies the word of the Lord with the true inner commitment, not external or mere application of the word to those people, but rather he will live in the word. It is not like that following them to become a fisher of men, but rather being occupied with Christ and following him is one of an example of that, or one of the virtue of it. But this man not being occupied in the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and trying to come and take the word of the Lord, has really caused a great error to so many people in the churches today. And why these things are happening around? The only one primary reason what I can find, that they do not really love my Lord the way he loved us, though we are at sinners and traitors in Christ. Though we were aliens and enemies, our Lord being dead for us a substitute of spiritual death and given us this great life to live in this unique spiritual life and to lead us in the same divine dynosphere which he has designed for us in eternity past. I think we don't desire to live in the divine dynosphere but rather we are interested to live in this human dynosphere. And the tongue is not the tongue or it is not the pen for a rediscriber, but it is rather coming around with the viewpoint of great thinking from his own mind. 
That's why they're not able to discern the truth. To discern the truth, what does it take? It takes rightly dividing a diligent study, a diligent search. In the KJV translated verse of Jeremiah 23:32, lightness which has been used. Various translations it tells boasting, recklessness, lies. But only once that Hebrew word has been used. Which meant to say, Pakus what? And that Pakus what? Frivolity, recklessness, light minded thought is what has been appearing in each and every pastor in the pulpits who occupy the church to be the representative of Christ in this earth. This Paku Wat, or P A C H A U Z W A T H, Paku Zat, Paku Zat, only KJV translates it as once. The entire Bible is really a shame for us to understand why Jeremiah used, under the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, such great word among those pastors who think they have been called, they have been commanded, they have been given this instruction so that they can go and tell the truth without having true inner commitment, true inner preparation, true faithfulness towards the Lord and without having diligent seeking the word of the Lord. And why do you think that this men have come around with such kind of a great thoughts in their mind can easily handle the word of the Lord. Our Lord's word is infallible and inherent. It is not you when you speak. It is purely the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that you speak. And as long as you reject the word of the Lord to be communicated accurately, to divide the word of the Lord accurately, to give number one priority for Bible doctrine, because every believer will be evaluated by the doctrine that is resident in his soul. Not by his outward appearance, not by his material prosperity, not by his external prosperity or looks. Every believer has been evaluated by the doctrine that will be resident in his soul. And that doctrine which is resident in his soul has to be inculcated thoroughly, with emphasis, dogmatically by a right pastor teacher who doesn't take the word of the Lord lightly, or like this, Pakuzavat, what we have been looking around in the Hebrew. But rather, he takes diligently the truth and searches it and inculcates the truth to the people to whom the flock, to whom the care has been given for him. Since the ministers have not been so true to the word of the Lord, Quite obviously, even dispensations will not be taken as a serious thought in rightly dividing the word of truth. This man thinks according to my experience, according to my exegesis, according to my translation. This could be the method, that could be the procedure. And the other man comes and he tells this could be the procedure, that could be the way. The third man comes and he tells this will be the method, this will be the procedure. But Lord God, the Holy Spirit follows only one procedure because He is the divine author of us. Because He is the divine mentor of us. It is He who has given the scriptures and it is He who is going to rightly divide for us the scriptures. But only what we need to do, we need to diligently seek the truth. How? When you have a right and true uprightness of your heart. When you are desiring to have that right and true fellowship with Lord God Almighty. When you are interested to look and to understand the scriptures. Lord God will send you a right mentor, human mentor, who in return, who has been thoroughly trained, will come up and tell to you what is the truth. So that the word of the Lord cannot be taken very lightly, recklessly, uselessly, but rather with diligently. You need to take the word of the Lord with more than the physical bread you take, more than the physical bread you take, and more than the things that you think that is most essential for you to survive in this earth. More than that, diligently you need to search the scriptures, dear brethren. 
Until that point of time, you do not consider the word of the Lord as number one criteria for you. Till that time, no matter whatever you perform in this earth, it leads to misinterpretations, it leads to errors, and ultimately it will end up in apostasy. Why there are so many denominations? One will say, I'm a Calvinist. One will say, I'm a dispensationalist. One will say, X, Y, Z, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Lutheranist. One will say, I will follow these Roman Catholicism doctrines. Others will think, it is better for us to convert from Baptism, from Baptist to Roman Catholicism doctrines. Why these errors that are happening around today? Because there is no proper minister to inculcate the truth with dogmatical authority. Because there is no one who has been thoroughly having to think that he has the bona fide gift given for him by the head of the church. The bona fide gifted man only for a male believer, not for a female. And who has been thoroughly trained faithfully under the mental ministry of blood the Holy Spirit will never fear the fear of men, will never fear the softness of this world. But he needs to fear only one thing in this earth, the commandment of Lord God Almighty in rightly dividing the word of truth. No matter what it comes, no matter how many people will come, no matter what they think, he sticks to the truth. He stays on to the truth. And he will consider truth, and truth alone has his breath for his life. Because that is the only duty of a pastor teacher, dear brethren. There is no other duty which any member of the human race can recognize for a pastor. Because those duty guidelines or the duty customs or the duty rituals or terms and conditions will be laid down by the head of the church. That is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That great head of the church who told. My meat is to do Lord's will, knowing not that I need to be in my God's business, in my Father's business. The one who told, labor for the food which perishes not, but for the food which perisheth not away. And the man who told for us, Father, it is thy will that we need to do. No matter what it comes, only thy will we need to do. That great amount of inspiration which our royal high priest has given to us. And why we need to worry about useless and worthless things of this church. In this church age, every believer been given that great mandate. That you are a royal ambassador, royal witness for Christ. First you, first you seek and search the sickness for, for, the, for the kingdom and the righteousness of God. And all things will be added unto you. Where is the truth that we are adding or searching to Christ? Where is the truth that we are able to listen to Christ? We don't listen to Christ, but rather we listen to our own inner attitudes. We don't search the scriptures diligently. Thoroughly furnish each and every word and take in the summary of the subject and come and preach. But rather we want to please the hearers who are coming to our congregation and tell them this could be the best method, that could be the best method. So that those hearers can feel happy and they can donate you some money for your survival in the church. Surviving in this church age under the grace provision of our Lord is not a big task, is not a big deal, is not a big work. But surviving to the royalty of Christ in this church age by staying pure to his word, by rightly dividing his word and staying for his ministry is what ultimately determines the fact. And many people who think that they can easily survive by telling some translated words and taking the word of the Lord lightly and thinking that this could be more worth or that could be more worth and we can do this and we can do that will never make them to come to know the truth, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. 
The bona fide gift of a pastor teacher demands a temporary sacrifice in his life. He needs to study the various history, the various historical backgrounds. He needs to get back in the original exegesis. He needs to tell the truth so that no matter what it comes, he needs to stand for the truth. No momentum in giving for him happiness or pleasure when he speaks about the defunct spiritual gifts. In fact, when one moron, he always adds and tells that one man went and asked him, kindly give me a financial deliverance. And immediately Lord spoke to him, it seems. Why for, for, why for him alone? The first 500 people who will type Amen in the online, they will also get this delivery. So he sent the deliverance in the Facebook post. And many morons who believe the deluded believers in every generation were always present for such kind of a false things, for visions and dreams and prophecies. They surely will type Amen. And they say, I receive it and they send it to that person. Popularizing only the first 500. Popularizing the only first 200. Popularizing the first 100. And when such kind of a man, they come to the ministry to divide the word of the Lord, what they will divide? The metamorphical explanation of the word, which could be used as a figure of speech, for oil representing unction, replacing it with water, this moron wants to tell, and he calls himself as an Andrew anointed prophet. And he tells, see how many people they have been looking around, they are walking around, they are running for me around. Since it is devil's world, devil's doctrine is popular. And devil members who have been influenced by satanic thoughts, satanic teaching, which is matiosis, which is only blank, vacuum. They run for such kind of a doctrine as more necessary for their life. What for their running? Temporary elevation from suffering, that's what they're running. They want to look their lives to be transformed by some miracle. They want to look their life from prophecy. They want to look their life from the point of healing. Why? They don't want to suffer for Christ. At least they do not know either the suffering is from blessing of God or it is their own negative evolution towards doctrine that they are suffering. That is the punitive decisions what they have taken. They don't discern even in that also. But they have a humble, sincere faith. But that faith will not help them out, dear brethren. It will be like that man who has been healed in Bethesda. The blind man, once who has been told, when he was been spit and put upon his eyes, he could see the man walking like trees. And then Lord asked him, what you can see? He said, I see men walking like trees. And the second time he spit, and then he saw what it was. He saw men as men. And what did our Lord say? Now you have been healed. Go and don't tell for anyone. This man, they are not even either to the first category, far less they could come to the second category. The first category, they are not even able to see men like trees because their eyes have been blinded. Unbelievers have been spiritually dead, their attitude towards Christ being negative. But the believers' attitude towards Bible doctrine being dead, they are spiritually blind. And whenever the pastor wants to come, and he wants to tell them the truth by applying the salve, which is Bible doctrine to them, They don't even take the first round, which our Lord did for that blind man. Far less they can take the second round. A thorough inculcation of the word. Do you know why two times our Lord has done? In Jeremiah 3.19, we have that. A great command in the Hebrew. To sudu, to sudi, two times. No translation has been used twice. It has been used only once. They meant to say, you shall not turn away. But in the original Hebrew, to sue do and to sue thee. Not la to sue do, la to sue thee. Which meant to say, not shall they turn away, not shall they turn away. Two times, emphasis of the word. And why it has been mentioned, two times. Whenever we give a command to our children, why do we give them twice? Take care for the second time. Be careful. Be diligent. And why it has been used twice, dear brethren? 
Even hear the example of that blind man twice to spit upon his face. So that once he has been looking like trees, the second time he has been looking men as men. So that for the first time he could have been seen men like trees all the day of his life. But he need to go once again the thorough purging. So then he could see the men like the men. Exactly we the church age believers also in this church age dear brethren. We should realize what we are in this unique dispensation. We should realize what we have this great privilege and equal opportunity for us in serving this great true Lord God Almighty. This privilege what it has been given to us. This privilege what we have been told to come with a pure heart. So that you should be a great witnessing number one. Your eternal life being granted for you. And for the second time when we spit, your spiritual resurrection that has been required for you in this church age. Your blindness of your eyes to be opened and to look upon the truth. The truth what we have in the word of the Lord. The truth under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which causes you to be evaluated by the doctrine which is resident in your soul. And that great doctrine which has not been taught for you in the pulpit by the pastor teacher will cause you to become, to look men like trees. Because we find this category of section lot in this church age. Nearly 99% of the people are looking men, not like men, but like trees. Do you know why? They don't have full truth. They have the translated versions in them. They don't have the real depth of the scripture. They don't have to look the tusudu or the tusudi, what they have been told in the Hebrew. They just think tusudu is enough. But the second emphasis of tusudi in Jeremiah 3.19 is not enough. Because no translation has given the emphasis of double thing in the Bible except the original Hebrew. And why we need to tell for you to go and learn the word from the original language of the scriptures. The fact and the reality is there. So that you can see men like men. So that your firm ground could be upon the firm foundation. Not on groundless or baseless things. And as long as you fail to understand this simple dogmatical truths, dear brethren. Your life is not a life that should be lived for Christ. In fact, even the church age believers have lost focus to realize that they have been kept here alive to understand this unique spiritual life. To look and to open for the truth. So that the use of Aya, wherewith you have been called, starts with the personal sense of destiny, which is the door of hope, absolute confidence in Christ. Followed by cognitive self-confidence. Followed by the great problem solving device number 7 and 8, which is personal love towards God and impersonal love towards all mankind. Followed by the temporary blessing when you go through the suffering which Lord has given for you. And as long as they fail to understand this truth, still apostate leaders will rise to the core. Apostasy is rejection of Bible teaching in the pulpits. The believer never knows that he has been positionally made superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. The 40 absolutes compiled by Lewis Perry Chaffer and revised by once again by, by my divine, by, by my human mentor Robert Bunker Time. Never will this church age believers will come to realize what is that we have in Christ. And why it is happening today that men are not interested to know this truth? Because their itching ears do not want to know the truth. Satan never wants them to reveal or to know and to understand this truth. The only reason behind this, men are no longer men to handle the word of the law. Men are no longer able to discern whether they really have the bona fide gift or not. Because of the popularity, because of the teaching ability, they think they can get around. Even when the two disciples first addressed my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they called him Rabbi, which meant to say in the Hebrew, translated as teacher. And why it has been made, made for them to make and to tell as Rabbi, as a teacher. That's the gift the pastor-teacher gift, 
men recognize him not for the deeds what he is going to do not for the miracles or healings or xyz but men recognize him because of the doctrine that is going to teach after the completion of canon what we have today in this church age and that's how the two disciples of John recognized Rabbi and called our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And our Lord looking at them asked, what is that you're seeking? Brethren, John the Baptist told concerning my Christ that he is the Lamb which takes away the sin of the entire world. The two disciples went and followed. What a great truth it is that we need to understand that they call him as a rabbi, as a teacher. Today when they come to the church and look to the pastor, what do they find? They want to find the dear old doctor for such and such things wherewith the activities of his life can carry on. What activities of the life? Marrying, christening ceremony, burial ceremony, thanksgiving prayer, for such kind of a things they want to call him but they never want to recognize him that he is a teacher he is a pastor teacher he is there for them to take God and to teach them and to lead them in the truth inculcate them in the truth his only work is to feed them with knowledge and with understanding that they don't want to recognize in him anymore as the Aaronic priesthood line was been distracted and corrupted. And now that Levitical Aaronic line will be replaced by Zadokites. Even these pastors who are handling around the word of the Lord today, they need to cross check and examine themselves whether they really have this bona fide gift of Christ given to them or not. It is no longer to be taken the word of the Lord lightly because we all need to appear at the judgment seat of Christ after we die. For each and every word, for each and every deed that we have been committed, we need to answer back to our Lord, why we have done that? Why we have ignored exegesis? Why we have ignored to take the word of the Lord seriously and inculcate the truth? Because for the first time when our Lord was being addressed by those two disciples of John, they said him, Rabbi, in the Hebrew. And that has a great emphasis in the Bible penned by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They would have called him some other thing. But they called him in the Hebrew, Rabbi, which meant to say he is a teacher. And today's pastors, how can you recognize them? Does he have that single ounce of a doctrine in him to tell you and you can recognize him as your teacher? What doctrine you are learning from him today? You think you can edify your soul by speaking around in tongues, jumping around in the music? And some morons like the Feast of Pentecost, which they want to perform today. Like the so-called great one, Paul Sangai in India. He tells, through the praise and worship, we are going to give you the baptism of the Spirit. What a blasphemy it is. That they want to give the baptism of the Spirit by opening their fatty to teeth, laughing around, dancing around jumping around and thinking they have been baptized in the spirit do you think that is the ministry that is the way how you recognize him as a pastor that is satanic to the core and this pentecostal crowd they think because of their music because of their concerns they can baptize you into the baptism of Lord God the holy spirit what a sheer what of a blasphemy it is there is no one that can baptize you into that royal family of God except the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at the moment of salvation when you express your faith alone in Christ alone. The pre-salvation ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The post-salvation ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which varies. The pre-salvation ministry which does seven things for you. Common and efficacious grace. Your regeneration. Your baptism into that royal family of God. Your indwelling ministry. Your filling of the ministry, which it could be used only at that particular moment, and when you sin, you will lost it again. You use rebound and you get it back. Your sealing ministry. You have been sealed and kept unto the day of redemption, and above all, you have been given one spiritual gift, minimum one, which I call it as a token of love for you. And above all, the default programs for you. You are an ambassador for Christ. You are having the royal priesthood. You are having to be a witness unto Christ, and that 
necessarily does not mean that you alone preach or you the ambassador work then only you can have the witnessing no by the treating of your life under the controlling power of minister of God, the holy spirit men can recognize in you christ this is the pre-salvation ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation. It is not that you preach, that is not that you sing and you dance and you present your life constant programs. That you baptize them into the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is a sheer out of a blasphemy. And one person who runs a program in the TV, he calls the program name as Treasury, some treasury. He tells that Water baptism doesn't cause anything for them. They need to be baptized with the Spirit. Then only they can never have the, the demon possession. And this is once again the blasphemy towards the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Spirit by water. This individual believed in the Christ and for his salvation has taken a water baptism. This is the concept what he tells in the TV, the television set. And then later on this person tells, since this man has not had been baptized with the Holy Spirit, demon possession is still there for him, so I will pray for him so that the demon possession is gone and he can be not under demonic influence furthermore. This is one trend that is following around in India as well. In that cult, like the Feast of Pentecost, they run around like that. This cult, with having not proper knowledge, with the moron attitude towards Christ and its Bible doctrine, they rise this sort of things in India. This is not only the point in India, but of course, it is into the every point of the world. Why? No enough men to be called as pastor teachers to inculcate the truth dogmatically. And we need to ask and check whether they really have the bona fide gift or not. And yesterday I met one of the pastors, he tells, until and unless they make a complete surrender to God, they cannot preach or teach. But rather I told him, the life of the minister is not important for you. Until and unless they make a thorough preparation from the word of the Lord in the original language of the scriptures, they are not allowed to preach. That should be the viewpoint for you. Not that their complete surrender, complete commitment, inner commitment. Because when Lord puts that responsibility upon his shoulders, like Masa, the Hebrew word, burden, then only he realizes what it is to be a complete, involved person for Christ. If this man come to the ministry with such kind of an attitude, that with their music they can baptize them, until and unless this man takes the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he doesn't have demon possession. Because in fact, even the church church makes the point very clear. When you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is the moment itself the indwelling Trinity occurs in you. And there is no other way, no other method, no other procedure that has been required for you. But rather it is the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to guide you and to lead you and to tell you the truth. So that even Satan doesn't even dare to touch you, far less you think it can come and possess you. And for a believer, there is no demand possession in this church age, dear brethren. Because the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has been totally changed. It is not the endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It is the enablement or the enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this church age. That's why Apostle Paul prayed for us in Ephesians 1, 15-17, the great prayer of all time. Enlighten the spiritual eyes of these people so that they can know the truth very well. And what for they are interested today? This cheap gimmicks, cheap tricks, shame on them that they take the word of the Lord so lightly. The Pakus of art is for them. Lightness towards God's word. These are not the men whom the Lord has appointed for you to take care. The two disciples of John recognized Christ and they called him Rabbi, which meant to say teacher. Today can anyone call you as a pastor teacher looking upon your teaching? They don't call you as a pastor teacher because they don't look upon you for your teaching. The crowd, they are interested to look upon your miracles, healings, or tongues. What teaching you have in the pulpits today? Let me ask the question straight. Awakely ones, awakely ones, how much you will edify? I think in that manner, you need to survive nearly a thousand years in this church, which is not possible for any human being to survive after the flood.
We don't know when is our death. But we need to be faithfully prepared for his word. Apostle Paul resided in that place by paying rent from his own hands. Three and a half years, two and a half years, two years, one and a half year. Why? Then he was able to tell, I am pure from the blood which could be poured upon your own head. I am not responsible for you anymore further. I have not sent to declare the entire counsel of the Lord, but, Lord, but rather I have given to you the entire Bible doctrine for you. The protocol plan of God then and then existed. Today being a pastor teacher is not a joke. Our duty and our responsibility is to give the word of the Lord number one priority. And when you will finish teaching the entire word, do you think weekly ones will work out? At the end of your journey, if you say, I have been saved for 50 years, at the end of your journey, it will not even count for four months. And this is how that is happening in today's church age. Men are no longer able to recognize the pastor as a teacher because they are not disciples of Christ, because they are not disciples of the word of the Lord. If they would be diligent seekers of Bible doctrine, then they would realize whether this pastor is a teacher or not. And by the doctrine, what is able to discern them, they will realize whether he is a true pastor or really has the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to him or not. And since this is devil's world, though the entire host of satanic forces and angels try to reign over us, we have Bible doctrine inculcated by the indwelling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. We can never lose this battle, no matter how long this angelic conflict will go on. It is Lord who shall reign forever and forever, and it is his doctrine that shall reign forever and forever, whether these people take it and inculcate to the pews or not. Any believer who calls upon the name of the Lord to hear the doctrine, Lord will provide them. Provided they have an upright and true honesty for Lord's word. So we have the great help always. If it could happen in my country like India for me, through the great teacher of all time, through Robert Bunker Pime in USA, it can happen to you in your case as well. Provided you have a right and true fellowship with the Lord and you have a right desire to know Lord's word. And if you're not interested in that, Lord makes you to go circle around, circle around, circle, till you could have a right true desire for Christ's word. And then he will end you up. Maybe that will be a lot great loss for you of your time in your life. Better you could lose your life and your time. So try to know the Lord with great truth and understand him through his word. And have a right true desire for his word. And search diligently the scriptures which has been given for us in eternity past. The scriptures alone have the power. And the mental ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, is the one that shall reign in us. When it energizes our activated human spirit. So that we all can come to one understanding in the truth. And it is not any more further the defiled communication. But it is only his truth. And which way you go, you decide. In the next step, we shall continue our discourse. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to believe an unbeliever tells that he believes upon Christ, that is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life. This eternal life is for them for free. By a simple act of faith, faith alone in Christ alone. How they shall inherit the land has been told in Jeremiah 3.19 that they have to call upon the Father and they need to call upon the name of the Son. And they shall not turn away. Again, a strong emphasis, they shall not turn away two times. There is no way that you can turn away from the word of Christ and from faith in him we have. And you can think you can inherit the glory which is due unto you. The only glory that which is due unto us for each and every believer is eternal life. By believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it shall be credited to your account. And for the believers, the glory is Bible doctrine. With doctrine you are valiant, with doctrine you are vigor. And with doctrine you are powerful. No one can even come close to pull you down. It is only doctrine, doctrine, doctrine alone. 
search the scriptures diligently under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dear brother. And you have the command for the pastor teacher to preach the word, Lagan, be prepared in season or out of season, because for the diameter of my witnesses, spirit you have been called, so that by this great diameter of my witnesses, the indwelling trinity is your witness, Bible is your witness, each and every word, whether you have taught it or not, and each and every hearer who hears of a doctrine is your witness. And if there are no witnesses, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be your witnesses. So which way you go, you decide. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that the was given to our fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.